Number 10, the Vargo Sobata 398 with a sintered titanium blade. Now, to be honest, yes, this is in the, the video for a very unique knife of 2023. I believe this one was a 2023, at least that's when I got it. However, I will say that I don't like the knife and I have had a lot of issues with it. But besides the issues, which we'll get into, the knife is a very unique concept. You know, just had, <laughs> I don't know if it's a smart idea, definitely unique though. Titanium blade, center titanium blade, <clears throat> which is like titanium mixed with ceramic or something like that. I forget exactly what it is, but it's very unique. I'm sure I'll put it on the screen for you guys to read about it, but basically it's a titanium blade. Well, now I could see that being a great thing for like underwater projects and stuff, but as far as on a knife, I'm not so sure. Now the Teravantium, I do have a video uh, sharpening that and talking all about it. I'm gonna guess that it's similar to that, uh, but I don't know. Um, now, the thing is, is I never really went into really sharpening and testing this center uh, titanium because of how bad the knife showed up. So the knife actually showed up just fine for like 10 hours. <laughs> then all of a sudden it started getting the most serious lock rock I've ever experienced in my life. I mean, I'm talking about like, this thing would rattle to the point where you could see the blade going like this, like it was bad. And I knew because of the material, even though this does have a steel lock bar insert, which is kind of interesting, instead of having steel on titanium, to have steel on titanium. <laughs> Anyways, my point is, is I knew it was going to get lock stick. I knew 100% this thing has got to get lock stick, right? And when I bent the lock bar over, right, and what I'm talking, I have videos on this if you guys ever want to watch it on how to tune a detent, you know, how to fix lock rock, so on and so on. Anyways, so you, you, I bent the lock bar over that way, right? to strengthen the lock up, to get rid of the lock rock, which would also in turn give it a stronger detent. Not that it needed that, the, the detent was fine, the action was fine, which we'll talk about in a second, but I knew that it would get stick. Now, another thing is that this lock bar bent so easily, I can't confirm this, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure this is like super soft titanium. Like it was so soft, like when I bent it, like it was just like, it was the easiest lock bar I've ever bent. Um, and titanium lock bars are usually a little bit stiffer, a lot stiffer. This felt really bad to bend. So it felt, it felt like it bent so easily. Well then of course, after putting it back together, yes, it has lock stick. The, the blade rock is gone though, for the most part. However, it still does have side to side, which it always had. So, you know, that's not that, I mean, I guess, you know, it sucks having the side to side, but it didn't fix that. Um, not that it should have. The action is really good. Um, it is very smooth. It actually has like a little leaf on the inside for the bearings to roll on. You can kind of see it right there, just separating the titanium from the titanium. <laughs> um, good action though. Like I said, man, this, the reverse flicks phenomenal. The access to the lock bar is good. Flipper tabs great. The, this thing is super lightweight. It actually had a lot going for it. The clip works good. Like I said, this thing is obnoxiously light, which does make it very cool for a lot of different things. Um, however, I'm just not sure of its practicality with anything other than underwater stuff. Maybe I'll try a new one and now change my mind. But as far as this one goes, I just see this having nothing but problems, especially as time moves on. Number nine. The Civivi Vision FG. This got number nine because we already had its version uh, last year. So the lock already exists, the part that is the unique part, which we will go over very quickly, but the knife itself does have a lot of improvements over the more premium Wii version. They upgraded the thumb studs, they upgraded the locking mechanism, which has better texturing and is more proud, so it's easier to use. They changed the clip position and the kind of clip it uses, which, I'm very happy with all the improvements. I think this just brought this knife to a whole nother level and it's awesome. Now the, the interesting part, the unique part is the lock. So the super lock is a basically a bar that has a spring inside here, right here, right? So the spring pushes the bar upwards, right? So you push back in order to disengage it. Now what that does is that little bar wedges itself between the stop pin and the tang of the blade, making it very strong. So the only way to close this you know, without using the lock, the only way to break it, I guess I should say, is if this pin or this steel bar breaks or the blade snaps. So really cool mechanism. And you know, it does work really well with thumb studs. I'm not sure about hole deployments, unless it was bigger and you had a lot more access to the hole and it was positioned in a great place. 
but the Wii version just wasn't, you know, set to the best place. It's cool. It was very cool. I really liked it, but this just took it to a whole nother level. Now, this is a Snex design. He's the one who designed the lock. I'm not positive what year he designed this or what year he invented it or whatever, but he did bring it into production uh, last year, and then this one came out this year for a more affordable version. But that's also why it's a little bit lower on the list. Number eight, the Ram Lock. So regardless of what it's on, the Ram Lock did come out in 2023, and it is a fascinating lock. They did a good job on it. Now... It's, it's a great lock, a great idea, great mechanism. I love it. It's a drop-in mechanism, um, but a couple things. One, you know, it's kind of like a hybrid. So this type of thing has already been kind of done. If you look at the ball lock um, or the crossbar locks, you know, it has been done. But this does add this little feature with just a nice big steel bar, you know, and well, actually, the crossbar lock has a bar. This, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. It's like a steel plate, whatever. Um, but it does supposedly make for a very strong lock. However, I'm not positive, but I think they might have to do a little recall. Now, I don't know, right? Um, but I've seen a lot of videos on people showing how easily theirs are failing. Mine doesn't fail that easily, but I can see in the video that they are not hitting it hard. Um, there's no reason why it should be failing many of them. So, you know, it, it does suck. Hopefully it's something that doesn't, you know, hit all of them. Uh, but if it does, that would, that would be considered, you know, something for a recall, right? And if they did do it, I wouldn't hold it against them. I'd actually probably, uh, you know, praise it. You know, I'd be happy for them to do that if they need to, you know, if it's not needed, okay. You know, just send in whatever's, you know, the messed up ones and have them fix it. Uh, but anyways, I think the knife is awesome. I love, you know, Microtech as a company. They're hundred percent USA made. Well, not hundred percent anymore. They're a USA made company. <laughs> they do have some stuff built by Reich that is not not USA made, but they have a lot of USA made products and they have all the way up until like last year or something, the year before. Um, this is the MSI, which I have many videos on. I'm sure you guys have seen it, especially if you're watching this video. Awesome, awesome knife. Very excited to see what else Microtech brings to the knife community or the knife world moving forward. Number seven, the Pyrotech Kraken. The Pyrotech Kraken has a really cool idea of magnetic scales, which does make it, one, very easy to take apart, very easy to change Omega Springs. It also allows you to not have any hardware. Now, it also has a reversible clip. Now, in order to take off the other side, you do have to unscrew that one screw. Not a big deal. You unscrew that, and then this side pops off as well. It is also on magnets, but that whole thing is put together from that one screw, making everything just, you know, work really good as far as minimal hardware, minimal anything, and it being very clean. So great concept. I can't wait to see what else Pyrotech brings to us. They even sent me the HRC on this, which was 61.7. S90V 61.7. I'm happy with that. So really good job on, you know, that. I like the blade shape. Uh, you know, I love the ergonomics. You guys should already know that this is such neutral ergonomics. It really doesn't matter what, you know, uh, position you have it in. The action and detent, super duper good. They sent great Omega Springs. The lockup is rock solid. I'm very happy with that. Crossbar locks it should be, as long as the lock face geometry is correct, just like any lock, should be very strong. So yeah, shout out to Pyrotech, man. I really can't wait to see what else they have in store for us. Next is the Winter Blades Severn. So Brian Winters, Winter Blades, has done a lot of unique stuff. And he's done, done a lot of custom unique stuff and brought a few of them to, into production, which he, he's an absolute wizard and I love everything he does. Now this one might not have been as unique as some of his other ones, but it brought it to a big size, which I love. It still has that nice sound, which I love. It's not maybe as good as the factor sound with the ting, but it's still really good. I'm very happy with it. But the big size of it is what I love so much. I love the size of this knife. I would love to see him introduce some new blade shapes. Um, the handle, or actually, you know what? Let's go into what's unique about it. So what's unique about it is kind of the lock. Now it is a hybrid. So it's a lock that's kind of like a mixture between two locks. So in my opinion, it's a mixture between a crossbar lock, which would be the same way this is done. Kind of like the MSI, kind of like a lot of other locks, the ball lock, um, access locks, any crossbar lock. And then a mixture between the, um, 
the shark lock. And you can see the little tab that pops out. That kind of does the same thing like a shark lock in a way. A shark lock does when you pull it back, it does pull back and up. So it's kind of similar to that mixed all into one. Very cool idea. I love it. I, um, I love seeing hybrid locks. And yeah, I hope we see more and more moving forward. Now, a lot of his other designs or some of his other designs, actually all of them, I think, all had something magnetic on it. This one only has one little thing, and that's this thumb stud. You can pop it out just by pushing through that little tab, and it will magnet to this side or this side, whichever side you want the thumb stud to be on, you know? Um, now, that's cool. You know, it's not, you know, also it's got a reversible clip, so, you know, if you did want it left-handed, that's, you know, one reason why. But cool idea, and, you know, I uh, I think it holds in really well. There, it's You know, it's not going to pop out on you for sure. But I kind of wish you would have done a magnetic detent. Uh, that would have been like, that would have took it to another level. Now, I do know that there's somebody out there doing magnets on knives, making, or I think he's, you can buy it. I think it's just a package you can buy, and you can make any, pretty much any knife um, with a magnet detent. I might have to look into that to show you guys, so hopefully I'll be grabbing one of those pretty soon. But I'm always excited to see what comes from Brian Winters, and he's definitely a company that you always want to keep an eye on because you never know what he's got coming next. Number five, the RS Chaos, the Vosteed RS Chaos. Now, what is so interesting about this? It's another hybrid lock, uh, kind of been done before, but not really. Um, so what it is, is it's basically a button lock and a compression lock mixed together. So this is a liner that wedges itself in between the tang of the blade and the stop pin. And it's on um, basically a liner spring, but they attached a button to it. Now I was screaming before this ever came out, maybe that's where they got the idea from, for companies to do this. And the reason why was because the compression locks patent had ended. So anybody could have started using it. So whoever did was gonna be the first one basically. Um, so I was screaming about it for, for companies to do it. Sounded like they were the ones listening. So they did it, very, very awesome. Love to see it. I think it's a fantastic idea. It, it's a nice strong locking system, first of all. And with this button makes it very easy to disengage right or left-handed, which was the downfall with the conventional compression lock. Unless if you put a, um, a nub on it from OCD for EDC. He's got the CME from OCD for EDC that you can attach to your compression locks basically to make it a button lock. The knife itself, badass knife. We have M390 steel, titanium scales, titanium backspacer and clip. And then it's pretty much just like a button lock. But... Because of it being a liner, it does allow it to have phenomenal action as far as like the detent. This detent is super duper good. Um, so yeah, shout out to Vosteed. Number four, the DEFCON Fulcrum. Now to be honest, this locking mechanism, the first time I got to try it was on a somebody else's knife that was a prototype that was going into production. I can't for the life of me remember the name of it and I feel really bad. I was trying to look for it and you know, I, I for some reason I can't find it. So somebody let me know down in the comments so, so I'm not such a um, POS, but it was a great idea. I, I'm not sure if he's the one who invented it or not because it says the lock's invented by Frank Shi, I think. So maybe it was him. I'm not 100%, but it's awesome. It's a really good idea. DEF CON did a really good job with it. This is a $200 knife. 200 bucks, you're getting good blade steel, um, M390 steel, titanium scales, titanium mill pot clip and backspacer, TA hardware all the way around. You got spots to put tritium. The, the, the unique part is the lock. So the lock uses the pivot so you basically have a button in the pivot. So you push that, and then what happens is there's a, a little leaf that's going right here to here. So when you push this, it's like bending the leaf this way, right? So it kind of, you know, acts like, um, kind of like a trigger. So you push it, and then it pushes the liner back, basically like a leaf spring. So pushing that way, and then that makes it to where you can have basically a liner lock lock up, liner lock detent, liner lock action, but when you disengage it, it disengages like a button lock. So that's really awesome. The front flipper, you would never expect this thing to work as good as it does, it works so good. So the whole idea, even the regular flipper is great. The whole idea of this knife, I love, I love the concept. Um, you know, it also takes away, like I can only imagine like some of the unique things you could do with a pivot with this idea. So great idea, great concept. Um, well done by DEFCON Knives. And you know, that's another company that I think is flying under the radar, like, whoa. And a lot of people, man, if you uh, start paying attention to them, um, I have a feeling they're gonna go 
to big places. Number three is the PMP Titano. Now this thing is unique just because of this damn blade. This thing <laughs> is one of the most unique knives I have seen this year, felt, and I know people are gonna say the razel already existed. The razel already existed, existed. I get it. There's a lot of crazy knives out there that I've had on and haven't had on. So I know there's a lot of crazy out there, but to me, when I seen this before it ever, you know, like before I ever got it, it made me smile, man. I was like, this is what's up. <laughs> this is what I, you know, obviously I like the very practical stuff the most, but that doesn't mean I don't want something and like something that's just absolutely ridiculous and obnoxious at the same time. Now, uh, Max Ace did come out with some really cool knives and, you know, PMP, same thing between PMP and Max Ace, they have just you know done all kinds of crazy stuff i actually have another one that could have went right here in the same spot as well but this is the one i chose i did test this you can watch the video on that and surprisingly this thing slices really really good yes it's like a pry bar up here but right here it's a nice cutting edge so great ergonomics phenomenal action great sound too um but yeah PMP knives, man, always, always fascinated and interested in whatever they're coming out with. Now, before we get to two and one, I do want two honorable mentions. The Atlas Lock from Cold Steel, the Cold Steel Engage. Now, I put them on as honorable mentions because this is kind of a hybrid. It's basically a shark lock. So yes, it's a little bit different. Yes, it's their own version. I'm very happy that they did it, but I also don't think this came out this year. I think this was at the end of 2022. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was. I'm pretty sure they made it at the end of 2022. So yes, it's really cool. Maybe you were only able to get it in 2023. I'm not 100%. So that's why I wanted to say it or show it on this video of interesting knives of 2023. Um, this is the Cold Steel Engage, and this one uses S35VN. You can get it in other blade materials. and has a lock that supposedly, I think they said this one held 720 pounds before it broke. So it has the ability to hold a lot of weight as far as dropping force. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to be a knife that you can absolutely abuse like a triad lock. Uh, maybe you can, maybe you can't. Um, some of the videos I've seen, they didn't hold up the best compared to a triad lock. However, they're still extremely, extremely tough. Uh, probably tougher than anything you're going to you know, put it towards or put it through. So eh, I should be careful saying that. <laughs> Don't test me on that one. Anyways, um, it's a very strong lock, very capable lock, very fidgety, very easy to manipulate. And I imagine that we're only going to see better and better versions of it. And next, the Civivi Typhius. I put this as an honorable mention because the Wii version was already in existence. So they just took the same thing and brought it to a budget-friendly version, which is basically a two-position punch dagger or EDC blade, depending on how you want it or how you need to use it. But this is a very interesting way to build a knife, and I think it's really cool, but it did come out last year. Number two is the up knife. The up knife is, yes, it's not a pocket knife. It's definitely not a pocket knife, but it is very unique, very cool. These are made to basically be thrown and to be added on to features of, you could say firearms and different things, or just to be held, used, and, you know, like I said, thrown or used as a defensive tool or, you know, or just for fun. That's basically what they're for. They're for fun. And they are a lot of fun. We have an aluminum handle, and this is a blade steel of, I think, 440A. Uh, but, you know, it's not made for high edge retention or nothing. You're going to want some stainless properties and some toughness, which it does have. Now, the lock engages into the groove right there. It doesn't seem like it would be a strong lock, but it actually works pretty good. I've been pretty fascinated that I have not failed it yet, um, which you do feel a little tiny, tiny bit of movement, so you'd think you would, but it's mostly just right here having that movement. The lock feels pretty engaged, and then you just push the button to disengage it, push it back in, and you can get it also in a side <laughs> like this. And it is very, very smooth. You know, it's basically a gravity side. That's what this is. Now the handle is a little bit thin, a little bit slim. However, you can throw it, like I said. But, you know, it's just a fascinating way, you know, fascinating idea, I should say, to make, you know, somewhat of a throwing uh, tool. <laughs> 
<laughs> trying to be careful with my words here. Um, they have trainers. They have all different types of versions. You have non-sharp ones, which, you know, the pointy part's still sharp, so it's still going to enter. But, you know, the sides were never really sharp to begin with. Sides were never meant to be sharp. They were meant to be pokey, which these are. However, you can get them with an edge if you so choose. But, they're very lightweight, uh, very easy to use. Because of the length and because of the balance, they are pretty easy to throw as well. And you can see on, um, on his page on Instagram, he has, you know, done all kinds of stuff with these things in order to, to attach them to things and, yeah, just being really cool. So there you guys go. Number one, the Serge Panchico Rook. Now, what's fascinating about this is its mechanism. But before we get into that, we have an M390 blade, all titanium handle, titanium pins, titanium clip, titanium hardware. The only thing that's not titanium, well, besides the blade, on the handle is the inner workings of it, the lock and stuff. So, what is interesting about this? So, this is somewhat of a collaboration between G&G Hawk and Serge Panchico. They designed the toggle detent and the locking mechanism in this that Serge Panchico did with this knife. Now, if you guys know who G&G Hawk is, they make the most solid OTF on the planet, which is the Hawk deadlock. Now, I know you're thinking, because I thought the same thing, I could muscle a little bit of play out of that, right? Because you hear of the, the, the Hawk deadlock being just such a solid OTF knife, an OTF that has no play at all, and you, you always think in your head, I could, I could muscle a little bit of play out of that. No, you can't. No, you can't. I've tried. I, when I got it in hand, I thought the same thing. It is solid. It is as solid as it gets. Same thing with this. This thing, I can't muscle any play out of any direction it is rock solid so very strong locking mechanism now the next thing is the toggle detent so it's basically a toggle switch which makes for a unique feeling a crisp detent and a cool sound like this thing has one of the best sounds on any knife on the planet Anyways, really cool sound, and it operates really easily. It only has one side for the um, the disengagement, but it has nice traction on it. The flipper tab is up so high, you have so much leverage, but you can also easily reverse flick it. Um, you can kind of use the thumb stud as well. Uh, the, this is a sheep's foot style blade with a somewhat of a neutral handle, uh, but it, it's very, very, very comfortable, and I would love to see him, which he might be doing, some new unique blade, or not unique, some new blade shape on a mechanism like this. So it doesn't have to be the same shape or anything, but just the same lockup, the same detent, the same everything with, you know, a little bit more of a useful blade shape. Not that a sheep's foot's not very useful because it absolutely is, but that would be just so cool to me. I would love to see that. I'm always interested in what Serge Panchico is doing. He has a uniqueness about his knives, period, regardless if they wind up being a handmade custom knife like this. Um, and he already did have the Orbit, by the way. So... The Orbit did exist years ago. I have a full review on it. And I think not only me, but a lot of other people were screaming at him, man, remake that, do that again. So he wound up coming out with this, which is very, very similar and also different at the same time. So there you guys go. Number one is the Serge Panchico Rook. Work hard, stay tough. Until next time, peace.